Hello, Blog Tribe. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use Elementor to build your site's header and footer. In fact, we are going to build this exact header, this footer, and we're gonna walk through how to use these instead of your WordPress themes built in header and footer. Let's jump in. Here is the WordPress 2020 theme that I have. This is the default header, the default footer down here that we're gonna change. It's worth noting that you can do this with any WordPress theme. We're gonna be replacing your header and your footer, any theme, doesn't matter, Elementor is gonna work. Now, before we do this, before you design it, here's an overview of the theme builder, the process. First, you create a template, a reusable template. You design it, you style it, you add your logo, your menus, header, footer, whatever. Then you tell Elementor where to show that header or footer, i.e. you set up some display conditions. We're not gonna be building just like one header or footer and insert it manually on every single post or every single page, oh no, no. We're gonna build one template and we're gonna set it up to show across our entire site, very customizable. So let's navigate to templates, save templates. You can also just click add new or you can navigate to theme builder and then click add new. There's a bunch of different places to do it. We're going to add a new template. We're going to select header or footer. We're gonna do header first. Here is a header, we're gonna name it test header and we're gonna click create template. As you can see, Elementor Pro will bring up some like handy starter templates that you can choose from just to be as a starting point or literally just use. We're actually just gonna use it and maybe customize it a little bit. I'm gonna hover over and click insert. These are nice to use by the way, just as a starting point. It's gonna have some default mobile settings. It's gonna be mobile responsive. It's gonna work. It's gonna have some placeholders for your social links. It's nice to start from something, not start from scratch. So that's what I'm doing here. So let's customize our header a tiny bit. This should be a site logo. I actually don't have a site logo set up. So I'm gonna delete that and just add an image, which will be my site logo, by the way. I'll just drag an image on there, choose my pod course logo, hit okay. That's a little big. So maybe we'll uh, scale that back by changing the column width right here. It'll be something like that. And let's go ahead and add in a menu, which I'll just search for menu, nav menu. Let's drag it up in here somewhere. I actually don't want social links, so maybe I'll delete that one. I'm gonna make sure it's showing the, the correct menu. There we go, change the layout. All right, not too bad. I could change the little color up there if I wanted to. I could change how tall this is. Minimum height is currently at 180. I could make it really big or you know, pretty small. Let's just keep it in here. It's always important to go through the tablet and mobile views to make sure everything looks okay. I could see it changed into like a fold out menu, which eh, it's fine. It's not awesome, but it's fine. Customize this to your heart's desire. And then we are going to hit publish. Now, a few things are gonna happen here. This is important. Where do you want to display your template? If I just hit save and close, I have now saved it. It's published it. But if I go to podcourse.com, you will see uh, nothing because that's actually a separate page there. <laughs> it's not, it's not doing anything. I didn't set the display conditions, right? I created the template. I published it. I designed and styled the header. Now I have to tell Elementor where to show it. So there's a few things you could do here. By the way, if you ever need to find that after you hit publish, you go to display conditions right there. Add condition. Now by default, it just has include entire site. This will literally publish it on the entire site. I'm gonna hit save and close, refresh this blog post and it should go, boom, there you go. I removed the WordPress header and so the styling is all switched up now. So by the way, what just happened is actually surprisingly important. You might encounter a few theme design errors or changes because you're taking away your normal themes header, which includes some styling elements. So when you add a custom header, you may have to change things for the rest of your blog with custom CSS, or you can use Word uh, Elementor's theme builder or whatever. Just know if you encounter any issues, this could have something to do with it and you'll have to investigate further from there. Also, I did not even realize that I had a little second menu in this little header thing. I'm actually just gonna delete that. I just want this top part. So I will remove that one, hit update, and there we go. Now. Let's do a quick footer and I'm gonna show you some more advanced display options. So I just closed the editor and if we wanna find these, by the way, you might actually have to navigate to Theme Builder. You can see it didn't show under Templates. It's part of the Theme Builder now. So there it is, Test 
header. And you can also find it right here if you have multiple headers and such like that. I'm actually gonna create a new footer right here, header. I'm gonna choose footer, name it test footer, hit create template. It is going to bring up more uh, example templates to choose from, sample templates. So here are some fancy ones. I want one with an email capture. That one looks pretty good. I'm gonna hover over this, click insert. Again, I love using these pre-made templates just to start with because it has a lot of size, functionality, mobile friendliness already built into it. And I can just customize from here. So now I would customize it. This site is awesome. I might change up some of my menus down here. These are icon list and Elementor. I might change it to a menu. I might do some different design things right here, yada, yada. Okay, so I'm gonna publish this. I'm gonna go ahead and start by adding it to my entire site first, just to make sure it works. Do it, give it a little test right here. I'll open up this blog post. The header should still be working, which it is. Everything looks good there. Come down and my footer is active right here. By the way, you might notice that I have two footers now, the default one that was already there, and I now have this footer. What is going on? It didn't replace it. Well, yes, it did. Some WordPress themes naturally come with a few headers, maybe even a few footers. For example, WordPress 2020 theme that I'm using right here, I click on widgets, I went to customize widget. I actually have two footer areas, <laughs> two footer areas that I could like remove these. And there we go. Now we're updated. I just had to remove all of the widgets that were still displaying in like multiple footers, just made it blank, and now we're good to go. And just to test that, I'm gonna head back to my blog post. Everything looks good right here. If I go to like this page, this is an archive page, the blog, it should be working. There's my header, there is my footer. If I go to a page, not a post, but a page, there is my header, there is my footer. Again, it's not styled appropriately because I didn't spend any time styling it, but it works. Everything's good. But let's take it a step further with these display conditions. So this is actually very powerful. What if you could have a different opt-in, like I, you see my form down here to get people on my email list. What if I wanted a different form for different types of posts? What I could do is come down here and entire site, uh, yeah, well, let's not do that. Let's add a condition to show it only on post. I would click singular and click post in here, post. Post in category, that's what I want. Let's say I have an SEO opt-in because I have a mad SEO course. I would do this and I don't have this category by the way, so you're not actually gonna see anything. But if I did, I would select it right here and then click save and close. And that would only show this footer on SEO post, post from my SEO category. And then if I wanted, I could duplicate this little template down here, which by the way, I will show you how to do that. You would go back to your templates, your theme builder templates right here. You can just do export template, save it to your desktop or to a downloads folder or something like that. Click save, it's gonna download a little file. You're gonna go to import template and you're gonna just drag and drop that file right back in. That's the easiest way I know how to do it. Click import and now you have duplicated that header. Now I got a bunch of them down here, right? And I can maybe set this one up to display on a different category. Or, there's a second one right here. Maybe I could set this one to show on my entire site, homepage, post pages, everything, except for that one category that I have the different footer for. So maybe this one, I would do entire site, add another condition to exclude uh, whatever that I don't know, singular post in category, SEO, again, I don't have Edit on this site, but I would just do that and then click save and close. So before I leave you in this video, before you leave, I have some important notes here. First of all, you can choose to edit these headers or footers for any page. If you're just looking at it and you can see my WordPress dashboard bar up here, if you hover over editor, edit with Elementor, excuse me, it has test header, test footer. I can actually click these to go straight into the editing screen for the headers and footers. That's a pretty nice shortcut. And one more thing, if I go to my homepage, which this is a separate page I built in Elementor a couple of weeks ago, no header, no footer. What's going on? Well, it's important to realize this. When you're building custom pages like this one that I built, here's the top section, you put her, there's nothing down here. You need to go in and look at the uh, page layout, excuse me. Elementor Canvas will literally take up the entire page. It won't show your themes, header, or footer at all. If you click on default, this will be exactly like your WordPress theme 
you know, I can see my header and footer, and you can see this up here. I don't know what this is right here, but it's kind of like what the default theme is choosing. If you choose Elementor full width, that will only, it'll be exactly what it sounds like. It will only show your header and your footer. And then this middle part in here is whatever you choose to build. It's full width. You have complete control over the entire screen. I had it on Elementor Canvas, so it was not showing the theme header and footer. And so it's not going to show the Elementor theme builder header and footer either. I hope that makes sense. As you can see, Elementor, super powerful. I have some other videos that I'll link to right here that'll cover theme building and uh, the table of contents, which you can dynamically add to all of your blog posts, mm, just like that. And please consider subscribing. If you are a loyal blogger or podcaster who wants to make money on the internet, I love you. You're my tribe. You're my people. Subscribe and I'll see you next time. Adios.